Hello and welcome to the Harry Edwards Healing Minute, wherever you are, whatever time of the day, thank you for joining us. My name is Bev, welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. Make yourself comfortable and relax, focus on your breath, in with the new and out with the old. Clear your mind of any worries, allow your body to release and let go of any negative thoughts. Imagine yourself anchoring to Mother Earth like the roots of a tree, reaching a pink pool of love and light. Feel calm and know that you are safe. Visualise yourself wherever your favourite place is, perhaps inside the sanctuary chapel or in the rose garden with the water fountain or the surrounding woodland of Harry's healing sanctuary. I'm going to start with a little meditation this morning and it's written by Susan Johnson and it's called The Angel on Your Shoulder. When we think of angels, we imagine cherubs angel angelic beings and friends of light who are also always around but need to ask to come into our inner space they like to be invited but like any good friend if we trust them they will come uninvited they come instantly when we call at the speed of light because that is what they are imagine around you light surround yourself in an aura of white light pure white light. Feel it enclosing you, protecting you. Feel light, feel free. Visualise what an angel would look like, maybe a small angelic cherub with tiny wings, playful and mischievous, or a stately angel, a learned presence. If you had an angel to call on, what would she be? Male or female? What would be their name? How dressed and what size of the wingspan? What a blessing it could be to have instant access to an angel friend. Ask the universe now if you can have an angel friend. Give that angel a name and keep that name to yourself. You need do no more than that. You have already made the connection. You invite that named angel to be part of your life on earth, to feel close to you. Feel the wings enfold you in a safe embrace. You can feel the softness, the closeness when the angel draws near, the peace that settles in your heart and moves around your aura is always tangible. It forms an instant mantle of protection. Angels stay until the need is over. However, you do not always need to be in need to remember the angels. Tune into them. They are only a thought away. Angels bring peace, harmony, Worthiness, grace, strength, calmness, compassion, serenity. Next time you pass a feather, an angel has been near you to do, near to you and left a calling card. Remember to say thank you to your angel and to apologise for being out. Let's begin with attunement and grounding. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies and wherever you are right now. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure and conditional love, balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. And now for the sanctuary prayer. I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power the disharmonies within me may be overcome 
and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit. I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. And now for the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, love has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. Touched by angels, a favourite. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us, walk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand, and forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. We now ask that all the people whose names we hold in the distance, healing folder, and perhaps in your own thoughts and written words, receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends, and people for whom they have requested distant healing. Also send healing for the animals of this world, and especially to our animal friends who are part of our family. Now, for a minute of silence, while these healing energies are sent out to the world. placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessings for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies to all our friends in spirit. Thank you. What I'm going to read to you today is a personal experience and some of you may have heard it before but this is the shortened version. But it's a journey to the house of Harry. In 1989, I remember it was Friday, the 13th of October, I was introduced to a medium by a friend I worked with at the time. She told me a lot of information that, that would affect me, perhaps not immediately, but perhaps several years later. And she kept referring to a man called Harry in spirit, but I didn't know anyone of that name. The medium said she could see my aura, showing my past, present and future. What is an aura? I had no idea. There was no such thing as the, inter of the internet then, so I was unable to research what an aura is. Books may have been available, but I still had no idea. I was so excited by what she had to say, I wrote the information down and placed it in a folder. 
A couple of months later, David and I married, we moved house, and late in 1990, our son Joshua was born. Busy with a new family and renovating a house and not having unpacked everything, together with returning to work, the folder and its contents were forgotten. During late 2012, now that social media was available, I reconnected with Elise, who had not seen or heard of since she was three years old. Now she was 30 something. I also reconnected with my sister, her mum. Life started to change. I was aware of white feathers floating out of the air, or finding them whilst walking with the dogs, or out for a run on the ground, and I mean lots of white feathers. Lights in the house kept flickering, and I kept experiencing a feeling of being pushed forward. It got to the stage one day when I said out loud, OK, I'm listening, what do you want me to do? By early 2013, I knew I was struggling professionally with my workload and responsibilities to the point that I was taking work home to complete, and this was affecting my family too. I didn't want to show my work colleagues that I was feeling weak and vulnerable. And it wasn't until June of that year when I finally took time out when I listened to that inner voice telling me it was OK. Time to take time for myself. Earlier in 2013, having reconnected with my niece, she asked for any photographs or memorabilia that I might have to fill in the gaps to connect with her mum over the missing years. I looked in the loft for anything, still a lot there in storage that had not been unpacked for all these years. I came across a folder, long forgotten, and opened it. There was my handwritten recollection of my meeting with the medium in 1989. When I read it, I realised that some of what she had told me was happening right now. Yet I still didn't know who Harry was. The name of Harry really played on my mind. The feeling was so strong. I knew I had to find an old biscuit tin full of old family photographs that I had inherited from my dad. In that tin was a postcard photo of Harry Edwards and his friends and healing colleagues, George and Olive Burton. On the reverse of the card, it says, through divine grace, we are sustained by the spirit and healed through the spirit and we should never limit in our minds its power to restore us. With every good wish for radiant health and happiness from Harry Edwards and Mr and Mrs George Burton and all the helpers at the healing sanctuary for Rosalie, Shear, Surrey, England. Thy touch has still its ancient power. A friend and I searched the internet for the address to find the sanctuary of Harry still existed and was thriving. A spring fair was planned the following weekend, so I made a decision to visit. Satnav primed with the address, my friend and I were on our way. And that time, at that time, I was always scared of driving on the way, motorway, being used to my husband driving. Today, I was going to do it. The spring fair must have been quite early that year of 2013, as I recall, the trees were bare of foliage and it was cold. But driving up that driveway still gave a sense of peace, love and harmony. With me, I had the postcard photo that I had found in the biscuit tin and showed it to the ladies welcoming visitors at the door. The main entrance then was, was different and I was greeted by a portrait of Harry high up in the wall, near the ceiling. He is sitting with a hand held out as if to say welcome. I experienced a feeling in my chest that of a nudge or a little thump and I asked my friend if she had experienced the same feeling but she had not. I knew I had to return to the sanctuary, the house of Harry, and made inquiries to find out if there were any healing courses available to discover there was a healing college and an introductory day that June. This time I travelled on my own, way out of my comfort zone. I remember sitting in the rose garden by the water fountain, taking in the ambience of the sanctuary and the sunshine. There were some interesting conversations with the tutors and potential students who attended. It was a week later I made that decision to take time out from my work environment and its responsibilities, 
No, I really was listening to that higher self and intuition. Looking up the sanctuary website again, I noticed there was an angelic weekend retreat with participants staying at the sanctuary house. How could I resist? I was lucky enough to have the last remaining room available. Again, I travelled on my own on a Friday afternoon in my little car that I call Rufus, but felt safe and protected. This was the first time away from my husband and son. At that time, I had no clue of auras, meditation and chakras. All I understood then was that it was Harry and the angels that had brought me to this sacred place. Previously to my visit, I experienced a vivid dream. I walked up a mountain and entered some gates, and no, it wasn't the pearly ones, to be gre greeted by what appeared to be a white feathered being, glowing white light. The love I felt was overwhelming. I could not see a face, but knew this being was smiling. Was this white feather the angel of my childhood? I was lifted up by this angel that grew in stature. I was tiny compared to its size, smaller than a baby. I was cradled in the arms of this being and the angel asked me to touch the atmosphere, atmosphere around me. I touched it with my finger and it rippled, like something landing on water, and I was told this was a gift. The angel downsized and I left with such happiness and love amongst lots of meadow flowers. I turned back to this being I say is an angel and we wave to each other. Once everyone had arrived at the sanctuary for the angelic weekend, we introduced ourselves and explained our reasons for attending the angelic retreat. Of course, I explained my awakening, as I call it, and showed the postcard photo of Harry and Mr. and Mrs. Burton. We meditated, something I had not experienced before, but was advised just to listen and relax. What I didn't realise was that several of the guests attending the Angelic Weekend were Harry Edward student healers. They spoke of meditation and the chakras and still I had no clue of what they were talking of. I left them talking to each other and retired to my room. I believe it was also a full moon. In the early hours of the following morning, I awoke to see what I believe was an orb. It was translucent and about the size of a football. It had its own light, but did not illuminate, illuminate the room. I, wear, I was aware of it for around 30 seconds or so before it disappeared. It was very comforting and calming and I was not afraid. Before the angelic weekend commenced, the tutors asked for our dates and time of birth so that they could research our individual angels. When I was given my personal information, it made no sense to me and I felt out of my depth. We all have an assigned angel, an incarnational angel and a heart angel. Their names I had never heard of before. When I returned home, I did some research on these angels and was stunned by my findings. I met some wonderful people and experienced for myself hands-on healing, gaining some experience of meditation and the chakras and of course the angels. I think I was one of the first guests out and, out and about in the morning, enjoying the summer sunshine whilst eating my breakfast. Then taking photographs of the beautiful, beautiful flowers in bloom, which is a hobby of mine. The group reconvened. There was so much to learn of the angelic realms and we were paired off for discussion. The Saturday evening arrived and we all went for a walk, visiting the angel of the wood and gathered in a circle of trees within the woodland of Harry's house. Then we met in the Rose Garden in a friendship circle and ex exchanged gifts, making a dedication to someone. Mine was to Harry for bringing me here. I had no idea of the struggles at the time of many of the group. In fact, I felt quite selfish when I realised what had brought them to the sanctuary. They are and remain such strong and natural healers and I have learned so much from them and we have remained friends. The next day brought about another group meditation of angelic healing. I swear I felt a pressure as if someone had their hands on my shoulders. The room became very warm and there was a feeling of being encircled with a loving energy like a vortex. We asked the angels for a gift and an inner voice told me I had already received it. 
This weekend had such a profound effect on me. I knew I was being guided and enrolled on the Harry Edwards Healing course later that year. The first weekend was daunting. I had to find accommodation and on the first occasion it was awful, but also exciting. On entering the house of Harry, two people were already there. I had never met them before, yet we had a connection straight away. Some of the students had travelled from Japan, Germany and France. Of course, I couldn't resist telling them of my story about Harry. I had so much to learn of grounding, centering, attunement, energy and the ch chakras, all new to me. Many of the group already had experience of healing, so I felt quite a novice compared to their experience. For my second visit for the Module 2, I found different accommodation in the nearby village called Albury. I have become a regular visitor there when I can. I find this venue has a healing quality all of its own, with the river Tillingbourne running through the grounds and the surrounding woodland. On many occasions I spend time watching and listening to the flow of water as it travels downstream. It is so peaceful. During the healing course I also became aware of energies surrounding people, sometimes different colours, and then noticed the energy emanating from the trees when out walking with the dogs or out for a run. During the two-year course I spent as a student healer, I volunteered when possible. I gained a lot of knowledge from the qualified healers and also participated in another 12 months course when I had qualified. I have made so many like-minded minded friends. I visit whenever I can, as I do not live, li live locally. It is full of love, light, peace, and of course, healing energies. Thank you. Please continue to contact us in a normal way. Visit our website for details. We are a phone call away. We can chat with you if you need to talk with someone. You can email us or write a letter. We can send you distant healing. We offer telephone healing and also Skype or Zoom healing. You can also visit the Rose Garden with the water fountain and the Sanctuary Chapel via the Sanctuary webcams. Join us tomorrow for another Healing Minute with Gary. Bye for now. Love, light and blessings to you all. Take care. Bye. This music from a CD called Angels and it's written by Kevin Kendall and it's called Red Admiral.
before I go, I've just received a message to say it's Doreen doing the healing minute tomorrow. Apologies. See you tomorrow, Doreen. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.